Good day Grade 12s, welcome to this next lesson in our June exam prep. In this lesson we're going to be looking at some questions, so let's get started straight away. A group of learners uses a reaction of clean magnesium ribbon, magnesium ribbon with dilute hydrochloric acid to investigate factors that influence reaction rate. The balance equation is magnesium plus hydrochloric acid gives you magnesium chloride plus hydrogen delta H is smaller than naught. So it's if the above reaction exothermic or endothermic and give a reaction a reason for the answer and the answer is that it's exothermic and why because delta H is smaller than zero which means that it gives off heat now it says if one of the experiments in one of the experiments five grams of magnesium ribbon was added to the hydrochloric acid solution okay so we've got magnesium plus 2 HCl goes to magnesium chloride plus hydrogen and it says initially we got 5 grams of magnesium and it says if 30 cubic centimeters of dilute hydrochloric acid solution of concentration so 30 cubic centimeters of concentration 1,5 moles is used up in one minute, it's used up in one minute. Calculate the H average rate of reaction in moles per second. So we want the reaction in moles per second. Okay, so first of all, we know that concentration is number of moles over volume, but the volume has to be in decimeters cubed. Okay, so this concentration is 1.5 moles per decimeter cubed and we want to know the average reaction rate in moles. So we need to find out the number of moles. So using this formula, we've got concentration is number of moles over volume. Therefore, the number of moles is concentration times the volume. Okay. The concentration they gave us is 1.5 and we're happy with that because it's moles per decimeter cubed. But the volume is 30 cubic centimeters and we need to change to decimeters. So to change cubic centimeters to decimeters we need to divide by a thousand. So that is going to be 30 over a thousand and that's going to be our number of moles. So basically that's 1,5 times by 0, 0, 3, and we need to pop that in our calculator. We've got 1, 5 times 0, 0, 3, which becomes 0, 0, 4, 5. So that number of moles is 0, 0, 4, 5, but that was the number of moles used up in one minute. So what do we have to do? We now need to divide that by 60 to get the reaction rate in moles per second. So again we need our calculator. So we take that value of 0 0.05 and we divide it by 60 and we get 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So the reaction rate is 7,5 times by 10 to the negative 4 moles per second. Okay, it's quite a nice question. Right, now I'm going to erase this so we can look at the next part of the question. Now it says the volume of the hydrogen gas produced as a function of time in this experiment is represented by the graph S. So it goes like this. Okay, it looks a bit like a S. Okay, now it says how does the rate of the reaction change between, and we can write down increase, decrease, remain the same, T1 and T2. So they want to know this is the volume of the hydrogen gas being produced. And they want to know what is happening between T1 and T2? And I would say that t between T1 and T2, the, inc the reaction rate is increasing. Okay, do you see that over here from T1 to T2, the gradient of the volume versus time has this steepness has gotten much more, okay, the gradient has gone steeper. And if the gradient's got steeper, it means they've got a greater rate of reaction. And it says use collision theory to explain this answer. Well I would say that during that time this reaction recurred more vigorously and part of the reason for that would be that um, you would have that the magnesium is being reacted and so it's having a greater surface area and the particles are coming into contact with each other and having more effective collisions per unit time. Guys, whenever they talk about collision theory, you need to use the phrase more effective collisions 
per unit time. So in other words, if you're talking about surface area, having a greater surface area, you could say the object has a greater surface area, therefore the reaction rate is faster because there are more effective collisions per unit time. If you're talking about an increase in the concentration um, to increase the re reaction rate, you would say um, I've increased the concentration of the HDL, therefore there are more particles per unit volume, therefore there are more effective collisions per unit time. You guys really need to use this phrase when we talk collision theory. Now they want to say what is going on between T2 and T3. And here we can see that the reaction rate has slowed down. And why? Because the slope or the gradient is slowing down or getting less steep. And if that's the case, then we know that the reaction is slowing down because there's less hydrogen per unit time being given off. Right, let's look at this question. Initially, excess ammonium hydrogen sulfide is placed in a 5 decimeter cube container at 218 degrees Celsius. The container is sealed and the reaction is allowed to reach equilibrium. And you can see that the azure ammonium hydrogen sulfide forms ammonia plus hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, you've got delta H is greater than naught, which means it's endothermic, which means a forward reaction likes heat. State the Shatley's principle. Okay, now you guys need to go through your exam guidelines and go and find the Shatley's principle and go learn it properly. But basically what it says is that if we mess with the one side, it's going to do something to fix it. Okay, in other words, it's going to change this reaction in order to undo anything that we do to it. Okay. What effect will each of the following changes have on the amount of ammonia? So we want the amount, the amount of ammonia, okay, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, right? Only increases, decreases, remains the same. Okay, it says more NH4H is solid is added. Okay, so what are the things that are going to affect the amount? How much we're going to get out? It's going to be the concentration. Okay, the, what else? The temperature because of the endothermic, exothermic thing. And um, what else affects the pressure? Not really, even though those are gases. Um, concentration, temperature, catalyst, no, that's the rate of the reaction. Pressure, no, because that's a solid. Okay, I think we're done. So is this going to the amount of NH4? HS going to make a difference? No, because this is a solid and it doesn't matter how much solid you place in front of this reaction, it's not going to give you any more ammonia. So that is going to be remains the same. If the temperature is increased, which reaction is favored? If the temperature is increased, the forward reaction is favored because this is an endothermic reaction. And if that's the case, we're going to end up with more ammonia. So this is going to be increases. And why? Because the forward reaction is endothermic, which means it likes temperature. Now it says the equilibrium constant for this reaction at 218 degrees Celsius is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So Kc is 1,2 times by 10 to the negative 4. So therefore the Kc is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. Okay, so it is that's how, so therefore it is smaller than 1. And then we've said, Okay, and we know that Kc is equal to the concentration of NH3H2S and it's not over ammonia, okay, ammonium hydrogen sulfide because that's a solid. So it's just over 1. So that's what your Kc is. And it says calculate the minimum mass of NH4HS that must be sealed in the container to obtain equilibrium. So we need to find the number of moles of these in order to get the number of moles of this in order to get the mass, okay? So we know that Kc is 0, 0, 0, 1, 2 equals the concentration of NH3 and the concentration of hydrogen sulfide, okay? So do you agree it doesn't really matter whether we're looking at 
ammonia or hydrogen sulfide we're going to get the same thing because they are identical okay the concentration of this times by the concentration that gives you 0, 0, 0,012 so it's a one-to-one -one ratio okay so therefore we can just look at one of these two so do you agree that we could pretend that we had look it at just at ammonia and we could say okay fine that the concentration of them squared is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0,012 therefore the concentration of this is going to be the square root of 0, 0, 0, 0,012 okay so therefore we can get out our calculator and we can say 0, 0, 0, 0,012 and square root it let's try again we can square root 0, 0, 0, 0,012 and that is going to be so the concentration of the gases each of them is 0, 0, 0, 0,11 0, 0, 0, 0,11 that's the concentration we know the concentration is equal to number of moles over volume and the volume is 5 decimeters cubed so therefore we can get the number of moles that we're getting of each of ammonia and hydrogen sulfide because it's a one-to-one -one ratio by substituting into this so it's going to be 0, 0,11 is equal to n over 5 therefore the number of moles of this is going to be 0, 0,55 so the number of moles of ammonia is 0, 0,55 the number of moles of hydrogen sulfide is 0, 0,55 and because this is also a ratio of 1 to 1, the number of moles of ammonium hydrogen sulfide is also 1, 0, 0,55. So the number of moles of NH4HS is 0, 0,55. Now to get the mass, what do we need? We need the molar mass. So you guys need to get out your periodic tables so you can find the molar mass of this, okay? So the molar mass of NH4HS is nitrogen which is 14 plus 5 times 1 which is 5 plus sulfur which is 32 so that is going to be 19 plus 32 which is 2 and 1 is 11 carry 1 that becomes 51 grams per mole so therefore we can use number of moles is mass over molar mass we've got the number of moles is 0, 0,55 and we've got the molar mass so we can find the mass so we've got 0, 0,55 times by the molar mass of 51 is going to give me the mass and I'm going to get it back so it becomes 0, 0,55 times 51 equals 28.05 28,05 so the minimum mass of ammonium hydrogen sulfur that must be concealed in this container is 28,05 grams okay and that's your final answer please great tolls if you didn't really understand what was going on here please go practice these sections go study these sections and then do the questions and then to enable system have a great day